Hello everyone. So today I've been busy printing with dried leaves that I had stored in my shed um, from last summer and they were being pressed um, so I've used these um, in my prints today. So they've worked really well. I'm quite pleased with them. I think I'll be able to get some more or I may even be able to use these within my encaustic painting so these will not go to the go to waste. So they look really pretty with the blue paint on them actually. That was a curry plant. So these are some of the prints that I got with these. They're really gorgeous with the coffee stained papers and the old typewritten pages. Um, so I had a really nice session today, quite enjoyed it. That's on the Marushi paper, so delicate. And this was just a bigger sheet with the coffee stained Paper. So I've got some lovely elements in here too that I can use in my paintings and collages. I love the layers in this one. It's just come out really well. So if you want to follow along and see how I managed to create these, you're more than welcome. So let's get started. So here I have some dried flowers. Now these are great in the winter if you still want to keep printing on your jelly plate or using botanical themes in your artwork so um, in the winter time if there's no flowers or leaves to pick then this is another option to be able to allow you to to still work with botanicals so i've got a big collection of dried plants that i've saved and i just uncovered so it's just it's like a little surprise to see what survived and how they've turned out i love that bit of it when you start to reveal all your plants that you've pressed the previous summer so these came out really nice so this is the selection i'm going to use today so i'm going to use my big jelly plate uh, so i've got a bigger surface area to work on depending on whether i want small prints or bigger ones so it can be a bit freer i am going to use um i i'd recently bought these golden open paints uh, to try on the jelly plate because i heard a lot of um, jelly print artists use them and find them very good for picking up detail and giving you a longer time to uh, pull prints, uh, more, more working time. And I'll have some um, opaque white as well, titanium white. So I'll be mixing up some colours with these. I can show you the mixing part again if you seem to quite like that last time I did it. So I'll mix up my colours first. And um, before I start printing, I have my mixing palette here. It's, just, it's got dried paint on it, but it doesn't matter. It's got a piece of board taped underneath and a white piece of paper so I can kind of see colours. But it's just a piece of Perspex that I use. So I'm just going to take some of these colours. So that's the Titan Buff. I have the carbon black, so I'm going to keep the darker colours over at this side. Titanium white. And I'll put my heavy body titanium white over here. This is a phthalo green blue shade. A phthalo blue green shade. And a raw amber. Okay, so I found my palette knife. I was hunting for that. So the last time I showed you, these were sort of the papers I'd printed for. So I'm going to go for the same sort of colour palette. These sort of soft blue greens. Um, combination of papers here. Some are transparent. Some are like on copy paper or mixed media paper. Just a, a real mix here. Some are sketchbook paper that's been dyed. 
coffee and prints underneath so lots of different things for me to work with that's quite a smooth like a bristol paper sketchbook paper we get different effects with different papers so i'm going to start off with some of this tightening of bath and these golden paints have a lot of pigment so you don't need a huge amount of them Raw amber. That lovely soft, sort of in between a duck egg and a olive green, I think. sort of teal colour now. Scrap a paper here just to try them out. And that's to work them together so this is a jelly arts plate it is size wise 16 by 20 inches so it's roughly in like an a2 sheet of paper slightly smaller so that's an a2 size so pretty much a little bit of a gap there at the edge but a2 is half of a1 so it just gives you a bit more freedom to work but you can certainly do these techniques on a smaller plate if that's what you have okay so i'm going to get my leaves plants now for papers i've got a pile of papers here so i've got marushi paper i've got um wet strength tissue old music pages, book pages, dressmaking paper. So just a big pile of different types of paper. Some paper I've dyed with coffee here. Um, so I'm going to be using all of these as I go. And then I actually have some of these. I'm going to be making a little sketchbook. So I've had these pre-cut. So I might use some of these little pages. This is going to be the cover. And I thought I might do a little botanical sketchbook. This was one I'd printed on with the charcoal. So that's quite nice as a background. Just little bits that I've sort of rescued that were um, when I was rolling off the, the roller. So I will save these. I like them. And they might be printed on top of. So I've got a few bits of paper to work with here. This was just some paper that I ripped out of a sketch a drawing sketchbook but it's nice and smooth so it's slightly different feel so that might make a nice little study or sketchbook for me okay so let's get started with some paint trying this sort of soft green In the camera, yep.
Let's start with this coffee paper here. I'm just going to press down on top of the plant with another dry roller. Just make sure it's completely pressed down. Oh, that's really nice. And I love that line with the coffee stain coming through. So these will either be used as part of bigger paintings or in sketchbooks. Or lots of different things I do with these prints. So I'll get a second print from this one. I'm not sure how much I'll show up there. All those are got caught. That's the thing with the dried leaves. Sometimes... They just disintegrate when you press them. So in order for that to be picked up, it would have to be on top of a light paper, light coloured paper. So I've got some sketchbook paper here. Quite a faint imprint there. I don't think that would be a great one. I'm going to try that again. Just to lift up that colour. Very faint image there. So I'll try something a bit darker next time. I think this was a um a curry plant. It smells like curry. This is the Marushi paper used by printmakers in Sheen Collet. This is very thin paper. So this would be more like a silhouette. I'm just getting the outline of the shape. But these silhouettes, when you lay them on top of other prints, can work really well. Because you can see what's going on beneath. See that? Oh, it's very nice. On top of the white, so we can see it better how much detail that's picked up. This one wasn't so good, but these little heads came out really well. Oh, 
there's three three pulls from that one print. bugs Try using this text because the text will come through on the areas that are silhouetted. Do that. A baron, that's what it's called. Some subtle, isn't it? lighter one Thank you. 
Und schaust du das nach? I think the um, open acrylics are not as opaque as if I was using the heavy body white. So you're not getting that same opacity. I'll do the same thing again, but with the heavy body. See the difference? This is a Baca paper. I've not tried this before, so I'll give it a go. Abaca or Abaca, I'm not sure how you say it. Seems to be suctioning on quite well to the oops, quite fibrous. Oh, lost. That's the bunny tail grass. It's cute. I just wanted to show you the difference between the um, open and using heavy body. So it sort of sits on top, you can see it more clearly on top of a dark layer. Too blocky a shape that eucalyptus one, I think. It's quite nice, it's coming across there. Not mixing that nicely with the open acrylics, it's kind of separating there. Mm. 
Ooh. It's a bit different than that. Mm, that's nice. I love that line there with the peach and these white pops. So many different papers that you can experiment with this never ending. White under, you can see it better. I love that. We're just coming over on top the lines here with that curl. Oh yes, that is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. We're starting to get somewhere. It takes a wee while to get going. Go give yourself a chance. And I really love that page, that piece of blue coming down behind the text and that white area in the middle. Oh yeah, you could just frame that as it is, it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't say so myself. <laughs> really beautiful.
Lost my tweezers. Lovely layers, things crossing over each other. That was a, a, a very successful printing session. I was printing for approximately one and a half hours there, so I've obviously cut out bits in the video so it's not so long for you to watch. Um, but I'll just go through some of the papers I created. So this was on the Marushi paper, uh, some lovely layers there. This was on old typewriter this was a I think it was used a typewriter it's very old paper that I had I found in my stash I like the layers there and that was using the heavy medium on top of the open acrylics Marushi paper Marushi paper so these are um, not so good on their own but when they're layered on top of something else these are excellent to have these pieces because you can see what's happening behind the little windows and this was on the coffee dyed paper and that's a lovely tone soft tone to work on top of some well I really like these graphic elements where the um, it was papers that I had used for rolling or cleaning my roller but some beautiful white pops here these have worked really well and probably need more work on top of it but a nice background piece this one here was one of my favorites so i'd use this just to sort of pick up the paint around the edge and then worked on top with the, the ghost print and that came out really well again this was a, a layered piece with um, different parts of the jello plate and the rolled off brayer underneath I love that silhouette there with the black outline and that pop of white and that little bit of pinky tone there. Really nice. This one here, quite fun, not so sure about it, but it gives you an idea of how to use pattern in the background as a um, for a more opaque area to pull out shapes. This one's lovely and that was again on the coffee dyed paper as the base really subtle color changes here you just couldn't do that with a brush that's what i love about the jelly plate and each one is slightly different so for this one here i used a larger sheet of paper and worked around the page so there's um, lots of interesting parts to this and this sort of page I would usually use a viewfinder and find areas within it that I wanted to use Let me get a viewfinder show you what I mean so yeah, some really nice areas here that I could use in future paintings And here I was quite happy with the elements of this one. Mm. 
It takes a more abstract feeling. Nice composition having that dark area at the bottom. See how that could be layered on top. So once you use the, the glue on top of that, this becomes transparent. So you just see what's going on underneath. Maybe not so nice as a piece, but as if you break it into smaller sections, it's definitely got possibilities. I like this one as a larger area. And from here with the coffee stain, that, that worked really well, I think. So I've got a really nice collection of papers, all in different tonal values. Uh, pops of white so I could certainly use a lot of these in future paintings so I'm quite happy with that session and I hope you've picked up some tips and um, so if you enjoyed this video if you hit subscribe and uh, you, you sign up to my newsletter I'll let you know every time I've got a new video coming out so thank you for watching everyone bye for now